Most people think of kayak fishing as a solitary pursuit. As a one-person watercraft, kayaks are well suited to solo trips. Launching into the early morning stillness, prowling around quiet backwaters, and sneaking up on fish in the shallows. However, there's also a great community built around kayak fishing. In the Northeast, you'll find active online clubs, local teams based out of tackle shops, and groups of kayak fishing buddies who share knowledge and trade in fishing intel. Although I like fishing alone, I also enjoy getting out with other kayak anglers. It's a great way to learn new waters and new techniques, and it's always rewarding when you share a good bite with a fellow angler and help them check off a new species, or maybe even catch a personal best. On today's episode, I'm fishing with my good friend, Ryan Lilly. He's the brand evangelist, and yes, that's his real job title, for Old Town Watercraft, the makers of the Sportsman line of fishing kayaks. Every spring, Ryan makes a trip down from his home in Maine to feed his striper addiction on Cape Cod. This year, he brought along a friend and a member of the Old Town fishing team, Greg Bennett. Greg is an accomplished kayak angler who spends most of his time chasing bass on freshwaters in Maine, and he's never caught a striped bass from a kayak. Ryan and Greg arrived in mid-June, just as huge schools of Menhaden, also known as Bunker or Pogies, flooded into harbors all over southeast Massachusetts. The big oily bait fish are a magnet for striped bass. Our plan was to look for Menhaden just under the surface, snag them with weighted treble hooks, and then live line them on circle hooks. When we met at the boat ramp at first light, we could already hear the Menhaden splashing on the surface. I told Greg there was no need to wait for the camera crew to arrive. Instead, we immediately launched the kayaks and started fishing. Here's your bait. Just grab the hook for you. I would just kind of let him swim. I wouldn't let out too much line. Okay. And if he gets chased, they'll chase it to the surface. And you can see him deep. All right. Awesome. Can you him up? Absolutely. And you said make sure not to go too close to buoys. Yeah, this, you got a kind of little open area right in front of the dock here. But there should be some fish hanging around. Look like something chasing him, huh? Yes. Should I let more out? Give him a little slack so you can leave it. Fishing with live bunkers is always exciting, and it's even more so from the low vantage point of a kayak. And even with hundreds of bait fish circling in the water, when you pitch one out on a hook away from the safety of its schoolmates, it's often only seconds after splashdown before a big bass zeroes in on it. Oh. <laughs> I'm on. Is that on your bait? Yeah. But there's yeah. a lot of action, but... Wow. See him get it out of the water? Yeah. Still on the hook. It's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. Nice work. This is. Now I get it. <laughs> I get it. It's not. It's not usually this easy. 
<laughs> well, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, there's a ton of bait. Pogies are something different, right? Are these these are pogies or bunker or menhaden? Okay, all right. Depending on where you live, it's all kind of blurry. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. <laughs> oh my god. Come on. Yes. Awesome. That's not a bad way to kick it off. <laughs> Yeah, come on. <laughs> oh, that's a nice By late morning, the bait had scattered and moved deeper. We decided to switch tactics and start casting topwater plugs to tease up any fish still lurking in the area. Fish on! Right <laughs> yeah, GoPro. 
With striped bass checked off, our next move was to introduce Greg to some black sea bass. Every year in early June, sea bass move into Upper Buzzards Bay to spawn, and the fishing is easily accessible for kayak fishermen. We moved further offshore to deeper water and tied on bucktail jigs and epoxy jigs. I'm on. Here we go. Fishing the bottom, we caught plenty of sea bass, along with a surprise kingfish, and even a bonus fluke. Thank you. Nice. Oh! The plan for day two was to head west to Connecticut and meet up with Old Town Pro Staff member Matt Stone. Matt is a high school English teacher, and when he isn't in the classroom, he's out on the water in his Old Town Sportsman Autopilot kayak, targeting big striped bass in Long Island Sound. We were also joined today by On the Water's Chris Megan. We launched our armada of five kayaks into a tributary of the Connecticut River and pedaled out to fish the main stem of the Connecticut, just south of Route 95. So the plan tonight, we got a little more wind than we had hoped for, but it's starting to level out, which is good. We've got huge full moon tides in June, which is key striped bass time. And so you've got striped bass that have been migrating up the coast. They're starting to enter the river. They come into the river mostly to eat bunker, Menhaden. Um, and so they're following pods of Menhaden. Connecticut River is basically a deep channel down the middle and flats on the side. Well, part of what makes it such a great kayak fishery is the fish move up onto these flats, shallow water, you can kind of sneak up on them. And so that's our plan, fish these flats as the tide drops, throw top waters, big soft plastics, hopefully intercept some of those big striped bass that are in here to eat Menhaden. Well, I, I would love to get my hands on one of these big fish that I've heard so much about. We did pretty well yesterday in Falmouth. We did. Um, but I, this is a fishery that's new to me. I'm really excited. So thanks so much for showing us the ropes. And Absolutely. I can't wait to see a big striper come up on that top water. Uh, me neither. So we're at the end of uh, day two of fishing with the Old Town crew. Uh, day one we spent on Cape Cod, checked out a bunch of estuaries on Cape Cod. Day two we have uh, come out here to the Connecticut River and fished a pretty heavy outgoing tide that was a little tough with a lot of wind. Things settled down now, we got a beautiful evening and we've had some fish start to hit top water and hit some bunker and everything else. So 
enjoying this day and uh, see how we can do with the last few minutes of this gorgeous sunset, see if we can put some more fish on these kayaks. This is not a um, striper, this is something different. I have no idea. They got teeth, all right, don't stick my hand in there. <laughs> That's a good fish. Back at the On the Water headquarters on Cape Cod, we invited Ryan and Greg into the podcast studio to reflect on their trip and talk about all things kayak fishing. This week, you guys came down from Maine, uh, came down on Monday night. We got up early Tuesday and we got out there. And Greg, this was, you know, I don't think it was your first time on saltwater fishing, but it was... Uh, I should say, yes, it was in a kayak. My first time saltwater fishing and targeting striper at that too so it was uh so tell us a little bit about those the first 20 minutes of uh striper fishing up here on cape cod well it, it was just completely eye-opening for me um from just like like you say the first 20 minutes you, you basically fish for live bait um that was eye-opening because i didn't know that's exactly how you guys typically fish for for bunker or um yeah, we went out in there um, right off the launch right away, saw a pod of bunker uh, or, you know, what we call menhaden, also called pogies, and was able to get snagging hooks, you know, using a weighted treble hook and snag a bait and, and hand that to you. Yep, yep. And so, I mean, within five seconds of it being in the water, you kind of kind of tell me exactly, okay, let the line go and it's swimming around. Um, and then not even 30 seconds wham uh you see the fish jump and and you kind of keep your eye on it but obviously it's, it's doing a little bit of pulling a little bit of drag and then wham again and next thing you know um it was hooked onto a, a striped bass and that was just exhilarating like just a feeling of having uh, seeing the action that knowing that uh that the bait fish is under distress and, and trying to get away um and a striper chasing it and then setting the hook 
uh, and reeling them in. Obviously, it, striper is a big fish. Yeah. Uh, I was pulling drag. And, and that, that was a good fish, too, for a first striped bass. A lot yeah. of people start off with a smaller fish, a schoolie. They had to go right into a slot size fish big enough to eat a, you know, a two pound bunker is, is a pretty cool not way to 25 start. 25 yards from where he launched. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. That was, I was, was telling was you, awesome. like, it's not always this easy. Don't be spoiled. <laughs> Um, but the way you describe that too, uh, a lot of people think, um, you know, in terms of bait fishing can be boring, but definitely not when you're fishing a live bait like that for striped bass. And especially even from a kayak where you're down low and you're yep. pretty close to the action. Yep. Um, so yeah, I'm glad you got to kind of experience striper fishing in that way and, and break into it in that way. Yeah, no, it's just it, every time you get out, you, you try to find a opportunity or, or something to learn. And that I took so much away from that. Um, and we even went out today by ourselves, uh, did the same exact thing and caught one, caught two actually. Yeah. So, um, I also say thank you for that. Yeah, no, it was, it was, it's always great to show people kind of like your home waters, see them enjoy it and see them have a good time out there. It's been a lot of fun getting to know you guys and fishing with you, Greg, it was great to meet you this week and see you, uh, cross off that striped bass off the Likewise. life list. Mm -hmm. Thank Very you. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Thanks for coming down guys. Have a safe trip back up to Maine. Thank you. Deal. Thanks. You can catch the full episode of the On The Water podcast on On The Water's YouTube channel or wherever you get your podcasts.